Out of all the isekai protagonists we've ever talked about, Sid Kagano might just be the most overpowered out of all of them. That doesn't necessarily mean he's the strongest in terms of overall power, but when it comes to what constitutes an overpowered character, Sid takes it to the limit then goes even further past it. He has a certain trait that most, if not all, other isekai protagonists don't even come close to having. And it's that aspect that I feel differentiates him as the most overpowered protagonist in an isekai. So, as I go over what that is using details left out from the novels, hopefully I can convey why it is Sid's overwhelming shows of power are fundamentally different from everyone else's. But first, do you like Chainsaw Man? How about the gun-wielding waifus from the sci-fi RPG shooter Nikkei? Well, if you do, then you'd be happy to hear Nikkei has sponsored this video so I can tell you about their newest collaboration with Chainsaw Man. That's right, one of the most popular anime is making its way into the most popular new mobile game. Not only bringing us Makima and Power, but also Himeno as in-game playable characters. So, in addition to getting to see them in a new stylized manner following Nikkei's high-level art design, you'll also bring them into the exciting battles of this post-apocalyptic world. Plus, with brand new weapons adapted from the anime itself, all three characters will have a unique playstyle befitting what you know about them. Making for some pretty awesome in-game skill cuts, as well as adding even more strategic options when it comes to the pre-mission planning phase. So, whether you like Chainsaw Man or Nikkei's gun-wielding waifus, if you want to see them both in action in this fun arcade shooter, then be sure to use the link below to download Nikkei for free today. Not only is it just on mobile now, but you can also play cross-platform on PC with full mouse and keyboard support, allowing for a much more immersive gameplay experience. But now, let's get back to the video. To be overpowered means to overcome with superior strength. It doesn't necessarily have to refer to a person's absolute max potential, but can instead relate to that person's ability to overwhelm someone. So when I say that Sid is the most overpowered, I'm not talking about how strong he is relative to other characters from different isekai, but instead the scale at which he overwhelms his opponents in battle. I'm talking about his ability to defeat them in such a one-sided manner that to even call it a battle would be an insult to what truly constitutes one. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking how Ainz and Rimuru tend to do the same, but the core of what makes them so overwhelmingly strong is fundamentally different from what makes Sid so strong. Yes, all three of these characters do have magic and abilities incomparable to anyone else in their universe, but for Ainz and Rimuru that's just about all they have. They're overpowered because their magic build and stats allow them to be. Take away Ainz's hundreds of spells and his pay-to-win equipment, or Rimuru's ultimate abilities and his innate traits as a slime, and what you're left with are two average salarymen who wouldn't survive in a fight otherwise. When it comes to someone like Sid, though, even without his magic and the equipment that stems from it, his immense knowledge of combat and mastery over every single aspect of it makes him a daunting opponent even before he was isekai he applies this additional element of experience on top of all the other things that the likes of Ainz and Rimuru possess as well. Making for this overpowered character who not only defeats enemies with overwhelming magic, but also with an understanding of combat so refined that even the most experienced fighter could be defeated with feints alone. Now, I don't expect you to understand what I'm saying right away, so allow me to explain just how in-depth Sid's sense for battle goes. A deeper look into this extra layer of power that's unique to him and ensures his opponents are defeated in the most absolute way possible. Then hopefully after you'll acknowledge just a little bit of what I'm talking about. Starting all the way back before Sid had isekai'd himself, his passion to become stronger had led him to practice pretty much every form of combat. From karate to boxing and swordplay to mixed martial arts, Sid engrossed himself in any and everything that would make him more powerful. That didn't mean he had become the greatest martial artist in the world, but if he kept training the way he did, then Sid definitely knew it was in the realm of possibility. Fast forward now to when Sid is 10 years old in the New World, and a clear disparity is noticed between his fighting style and the ones more common here. You see, with the ones he'd learned being a refined mix of the best humanity could come up with, it was only natural the more independent styles of each kingdom seem, well, rough. Since he'd spent years learning a style of fighting where movement was minimized and the best of each combat was combined to create the perfect fight, Sid could easily choose what was best for just about any situation. On the other hand, with this New World's fighting techniques staying within their countries of origin, the different schools of combat haven't yet merged into their optimal versions of themselves. 
Secret skills and hidden techniques are locked away within the jurisdiction of the country that created them, resulting in the inability for any person to refine and improve on what was taught to them. So, with Sid being in possession of this pre-existing skill set, that already puts him at an advantage over everyone else in the world. Combine that with the existence of magic and that small advantage turns into something completely different. Reason being that magic completely changes the baseline of a person's physical performance. Like, if he can now lift someone up with a single hand via magic, then everything he knows about close quarters combat is completely useless. It'd be like trying to fight a gorilla as a regular human. Say he was pinned in a mounted grapple, then he could simply flex his abs to fly through the air. If his foot was caught during an attack, then a slight activation of his leg muscles would send that person flying. These were just a couple of the many new options that needed to be considered now that magic was added to the mix. More importantly than that though, the speed and distance at which a person would step into their attacks was completely different and harder to predict now. It was the hardest thing that Sid had to get used to. Since martial arts was all about reading your opponent, knowing their range was of the utmost importance. It meant understanding the angle, position, and distance of their attacks, which in turn allowed him to optimize his own. With those three aspects being everything, as soon as they were understood at its fullest, it didn't matter whether the person attacking was 5 or 100 meters away. Sid could now determine the exact point to stand, which would allow him to both react to an attack and land a blow right after. It was an optimized position defined by a single millimeter. Combine that with an adjustment to the angle of his hits, along with a slight turn to the position of his stance, and those would all be crucial differences creating advantages for him and disadvantages for his opponent. It was all about creating opportunities through the narrowest of margins, not jumping in 16 feet then dashing 19 back. That was how Sid viewed combat and he would quickly remaster it even with the addition of magic. Now, that's not to say Sid valued technique over strength, because if he was forced to choose between one or the other, then 10 times out of 10 Sid would always choose strength. Reason being that he firmly believed advanced tactics without the power to back them up was useless. When confronted with strategies that relied solely on power, speed, or reaction time though, those were the ones that Sid hated the most. They completely disregarded the very subtleties of battle that made them so amazing in the first place. So, as Sid himself likes to put it, strength was natural but mastery required effort. And it's those words that I believe lie at the core of what differentiates Sid from every other overpowered isekai protagonist. Sure, Ainz and Rimuru and Hajime may have mastered the use of their own skills and magic, but Sid has mastered all that plus the art of combat. You see, to him skill and expertise are pretty much everything. He allows his techniques to bolster his strength, uses his ingenuity to dictate his speed, then his reaction time allows him to scope out potential attacks. They're all aspects that remain independent from the physicality a lot of the others seem to rely on. And though that is definitely important, Sid would never screw up a fight by relying solely on that or any of the other aspects. For example, let's take a look at how he approached his fight with Grease. First, Sid walked forward and waited for Grease to take a swing at him. As soon as that move was made, not only was Sid made aware of his current range, but that was cue for a minute quantity of magic to be used to speed himself up. He would focus the tiniest bit of magic into his feet, compress it till the time of release, then use its explosive impact to make himself faster. So, while Grease's sword was slicing past a target no longer there, Sid was placing himself within range for his own attacks. A slight shift in position that required minimal effort, yet still provided him with all the advantage. When Sid went to initiate his own attack next, he didn't use magic to make himself faster as their difference in speed no longer mattered anymore. Since he was now on the offensive, Grease had no choice but to move in response to it, which to Sid indicated he could no longer attack anymore. One more step forward and Sid would now put both parties in a position too awkward for either to attack leading Grease to step backward just like how Sid had anticipated. Even if he didn't though, just reading the shift in Grease's magical energy was enough to indicate that he was heading there. So this time Sid had manipulated the battle by using his own position to affect his opponents, once again creating a clean opportunity for him to strike without any risk to himself. Now, I know Grease really isn't the best opponent to highlight an overwhelming difference in power, but as the first instance where we get to see how Sid fights, it sets the foundation for how battle is perceived by him. 
It isn't just this competition to see who's stronger, but instead a dance of tactics in which one must overcome the other. Greece was definitely stronger than Sid was here, but because Sid understood exactly what was happening, Greece could only feel as if he was getting toyed with. He literally felt he was being overpowered, much to the point that he knew he could only wait and accept his death. Now, the battle that truly highlights this fundamental difference in his approach to combat is that one-sided fight against the Witch of Calamity. The literal strongest woman in recorded history who Sid beat just as easily as he did with everyone else. What makes this fight different from all the others though is that in this one he actually had to try a little bit. Not in the sense of relying more on his magic and his OP abilities, but rather through greater insight into what his opponent was capable of. It's an in-depth analysis that he likes to refer to as a conversation. Whenever Sid finds himself facing a worthy opponent, he likes to treat the battle as this different type of form for it. You see, every little thing from a shift in gaze to the position of the feet were all tells that indicated something about the opponent he was facing. They were these tiny cues that each held a very specific meaning to it. So, the more of these little things he observed, the more meanings he could determine from them and that in turn would lead to figuring out how best to deal with them. It was the very core essence of what fighting was all about to him. Only the most skilled in combat could perceive purpose in the smallest of actions, then use that knowledge to prepare a superior response to it. So, by thinking of it as a conversation, each person's communication skills would be their ability to read their opponent. The stronger your communication skills were, the further ahead you could anticipate, and that in turn would allow you to respond accordingly. If the other person's communication skills were just as strong, then they too could do the same and anticipate prior to your follow-through and then react to it, resulting in this endless back-and-forth exchange in which the conversation continues until one person's dialogue becomes too much for the other. On the other hand, if an opponent's conversational skills were lacking much like how many of them do, a dialogue would never even get started in the first place. It would just end up in one party acting on impulse until the fight ended which to Sid couldn't even be considered a conversation. To him, that was no different than trying to end the fight with a game of rock, paper, scissors. So, whenever Sid was faced with an opponent, every time he would go in trying to start this conversation, but every time until now he would always be met with silence. His opponents would always go in trying to win on impulse, resulting in a far cry from the true type of battle he'd always been yearning for. When he does have the chance to have this conversation though, that's when we get to see just how far this gap in skill and experience truly takes him. So, first he starts with observation, initially by simply staring to find those first subtle meanings, then following it up by granting the initiative to judge speed, mobility, and destructive capacity. It's a step that usually takes less time the stronger your communication skills were. Once that observation was complete, the next step was to refine his movements. And this typically involved removing unnecessary motion when dodging. Like, if he could turn full steps into half steps and two moves into one, then that would directly result in a window in which a counterattack could be made. You see, the less time spent moving to dodge meant more time for a counterattack, bringing us to the third step in which the first two were creating an opening for. Sure, Sid could have evaded Aurora forever, but doing that would never lead to victory. No. His dodges needed to be refined so that he could create space for a counterattack, and that was the essence of the conversation he was having. It was actually noted perfectly through the observations of Alexia. She was the first to understand exactly what Shadow was doing here. Now, for someone as skilled as Sid, the outcome of this battle was made certain all the way back at step 1. His initial observations showed Aurora wasn't as skilled at communicating as him, so by the time the first move was even made, both seemed to understand it was only a matter of time until the battle would be decided by him. Now, despite it being so one-sided, I believe this to be the best fight that highlights that fundamental difference I've been talking about. I mean, Sid definitely could have used any number of his OP abilities to end this right away, but that's never the type of fight that he's trying to go for. Unlike what Ainz, Rimuru, or anyone else does, Sid is always going in trying to start this conversation. He wants to begin this dialogue so he can beat his opponent in the most absolute way possible. Achieving that perfect victory is all that ever matters to him. Victory to everyone else just means defeating your opponent, but victory to Sid is something completely different. It's the process of systematically dismantling them in the most overwhelming way possible. 
A precise operation that always ends with him overpowering them both in strength and technique. So, whereas every other isekai protagonist wins their battles through strength and power, Sid takes it a step above and bolsters all that with technique and ingenuity. He would never solely rely on the magic or skills that came from being isekai'd. No, instead he chooses to rely on himself. His refined experience with combat, which results in this level of overpowering that we only ever see from him. That's the reason I think Sid to be the most OP character out of all of them. Once again, that doesn't mean he's the strongest, but when it comes to the scale at which he overwhelms his opponent, every other protagonist doesn't even come close. There's no one else who achieves absolute victory and inflicts such hopeless defeat like the way that Sid does. I mean, the guy literally beat the hero Olivier without so much as a sword or magic. He beat Anna Rose with perfect spacing and terrifying foresight, then humiliated Iris through a series of feints so intimidating she couldn't even move. Now, if that doesn't highlight that fundamental gap in combat experience, then I honestly don't know what else to tell you. It's his literal life passion to be the most overpowered. But yeah, that's my two cents on what I think of Sid. Whether you happen to think the same or not, I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments. This was honestly just a fun little topic that I wanted to talk about. Nothing that needs to be taken too seriously, I hope. But with this now done, I'll be going back and covering Danmachi next week. So if you're a fan of that, then feel free to check out my other videos. Until then though, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So until next time, ciao!